I regularly hear people say that a hospice patient was killed by morphine. I just want to explore that a little and see if that may be true. But to set the stage, I'd like to start off with a, an imaginary patient that has gone uh, to the oncologist's office um, to meet with their cancer doctor because things aren't going well. They've been doing chemo radiation and their health seems to be getting worse. They're getting sicker and uh, they're really struggling. They're feeling weak. They're not eating. And um, the family notices that they appear to be a lot of pain. So they just want to figure out what's going on. And in the course of that visit, the oncologist, she says, yeah, well, your cancer is progressing. We, we've done this diagnostics and it's past the point where, where we can do anything for it. So we're going to send uh, your loved one home on, on hospice and just try to make them uh, comfortable for whatever days they have remaining. And that's a shock if, if you're going and, and hoping maybe all this treatment was working and feeling like it isn't and then having a doctor tell you uh, you're not getting in better, in fact, you're getting worse. It can be a horrible experience to experience it. And, and even on top of that, if you're a family member that's there at the appointment or maybe you're at home when they come home and you hear that nothing more can be done, we've got to do hospice. Um, and yet, and they're talking to you. Uh, they don't look too comfortable, uh, but but it it seems like uh, passing away is an event just right on the horizon. And so the hospice team uh, comes in, and one of the things that is unknown is when the oncologist makes the referral to hospice, lets that medical director of hospice know, hey, this patient is in a lot more pain than I think they're letting on. Their days are very short, and I really just want to make sure uh, that you all just keep them uh, comfortable. I don't want them to see it. I don't want to see them in pain. I don't want them to suffer. So the hospice team is going out already with this referral from the oncologist um, um, stating that this patient doesn't have too much long left, they're in pain, they're in suffering, and we just want to alleviate that pain and suffering and, and help them to get comfortable. So the medical director, uh, most protocols or hospice where there's pain and suffering is to prescribe morphine, uh, oral form of morphine that be, can be given sublingually. That means under the tongue and it can absorb into the body through those blood vessels under the tongue um, in case a patient can't swallow. So uh, the hospice team comes with the morphine and the patient is uh, made comfortable and they're not as hurting. Uh, they're not hurting as bad. They're not suffering as much. And the morphine does have a side effect. They're sleepy. They're, they're, they're not, they're not as awake and alert as they were before, but they're not hurting and in pain. And then all of a sudden, maybe 48, 72 hours later, uh, the patient passes away. And the family is thinking, oh my gosh, I gave, I gave that morphine. To, uh, the morphine killed my love. I killed my loved one by giving them morphine. And uh, that feeling is a very real feeling that people feel like, did, did I hurt my loved one by giving them morphine? And the answer is found as if we just think about this just a little bit to answer that question. First of all, uh, the loved one had cancer or had some other disease, liver disease, lung disease, heart disease, kidney disease had some disease that was that was working to end their life. And that disease was getting to the point or was at the point where it was no longer manageable, that the process couldn't be stopped. So the doctor switched switched up approaches rather from trying to cure it to trying to provide comfort. So there is a disease that is in place that is going to lead to end of life. The second point is, is that when we are faced with a lot of pain and suffering, 
uh, compassion drives us to want to ease that pain and suffering so that there is not a lot of pain and suffering as somebody goes through the end stages of the disease process. And that's where something like morphine, and there are other other medications to ease pain that are prescribed, some uh, not narcotic, some narcotic. And the morphine, though, is the one that you, you most often see. It, it's, uh, it, it's very effective for, for what it does. But when I was... Uh, in coming out of surgery several years ago, it was a surgery that was going to re result in some um, significant post-operative pain. I was given doses of morphine every 15 minutes, the first hour out of that surgical procedure. And then the doses of morphine went further and further apart so that by the time I left the hospital, uh, I wasn't taking morphine. I was a healthy person getting that morphine. Morphine in and of itself is great for relieving pain, but the doses prescribed by hospice physicians is not uh, so severe that it's, it's going to uh, result in the end of life in and of itself. I mean, if, if morphine automatically ended, resulted in the end of life in a real high risk situation, they wouldn't give it so frequently for, for healthy people coming out of surgery. Morphine is given because it is a very effective drug. It is a central nervous system agent that helps reduce the feelings and sensation of pain to allow somebody to rest and get comfortable. And so the morphine is there for the discomfort and the pain of the disease process. And when the pain is relieved, in my experience, often patients have the time uh, and the ability, uh, because they're not thinking about hurting all the time, to reflect. And, and whatever goes on in the heart that goes on in those final days and hours of life, they're able to do that that life review and reflection on the inside and prepare themselves for, for what they believe is happening next. They're preparing themselves for the end of life in their physical body. And whatever uh, some people believe that once the body is dead, whatever else is, makes up a person makes up a person is gone. Others believe that the, the soul, the, that very thing, our consciousness, which makes us who we are, uh, is not so inseparably joined to the body that, that we don't have some existence beyond life in this physical body. I happen to believe that we have existence beyond life in this physical body. And many people share those kinds of beliefs, but, but re regardless of what the belief system is, people are preparing themselves for what's next. And in that moment of peace and tranquility, often you'll find that somebody is able to just let go of life in this physical body. And it is a sad, sad thing and a sad moment for the loved ones. You watch somebody go and you know you're going to, you love them, you're going to miss them. And, and it, it's really hard because you want to find why is this happening? And it's very easy to say, oh, it was the morphine that did it. Because they were fine when they went uh, to the doctor's office. They were a little sick, but they were fine. And, and, and once we got in this hospice thing and, and they got the morphine, it just killed it. They would, they would still be fine. They'd be here even today if we just hadn't done the morphine. But that's not necessarily true. The disease would still take its toll and lead to end of life, except for the end of life would involve much more pain and suffering. The real enemy for us is those diseases that result in the end of our lives. Those are the things that take us out. Those are the things that lead us to losing loved ones. And it's hard and it's painful to see and, and experience that loss of a loved one, recognizing that it's cancer or heart disease or Alzheimer's or something has just led to them not being with me anymore, with us anymore. 
And yet that's the reality. And that is why I don't see morphine as the cause of end of life. What I see is as a tool that relieves pain and suffering. I see the cause of end of life is the disease, the horrible disease that, that your loved one, my, my father, my father-in-law, my grandfather, my grandmothers, and all, I, what, what they all had, I see that as the end, uh, cause of life. Uh, this is uh, Chris, um, Pastor Chris RN. I am an ordained minister and registered nurse. If you enjoy this content or if it's helpful, I don't know if this is something that you particularly enjoy working your way through, but, but please, uh, like this channel, um, like this video. It would help us greatly if you would subscribe to the channel and watch the other videos. Uh, we are trying to uh, be able to get to the point where we can invest in making higher quality videos and doing a lot more of them. And that just takes a partnership, a, a building of a community of people that want to get good health information out there for people that are dealing with end of life issues. And that's what we're focused on. So until next time, uh, let's think of life as a journey. Think of the end of life as a sunset. And we want to build beautiful sunsets for those that we love and we care about.